If you are even mildly interested in astronomy, but don't know where to start, this video is for you. There are a lot of different opinions on how to enter this hobby, so I'm simply going to share my tips, but hope that you'll be able to find your own unique way into the world of astronomy. Here's what I'm going to cover in this video. A little bit about me, finding your way around the sky, learning about astronomy, purchasing your first telescope, tips, tricks, and fun with an iPhone, and okay, now what? So here's a little bit about me. I am not a professional astronomer, but I am a volunteer with the NASA Night Sky Network, where I go to high schools and elementary schools to help teach kids about space and how to use a telescope. I'm also a docent with the California State Park System, which allows me to use my telescope at state parks during public events. To look for events in your area, click on the link below. So how do you find your way around the sky? Every night, before I go out to look at the stars, I check a program called Stellarium to see what's up. It's free, it's easy to use, and it looks like this. It can be downloaded here. Space.com also has a sky watching section to let you know if there are other things like comets and asteroids that might not show up on the astronomy software. You can also download the NASA app, which lets you know when the space station is passing overhead. It's pretty cool. So where do you go to get a good foundation in astronomy? The internet is an okay source for learning about space, but it's nowhere near as good as an actual astronomy class. Here's a picture of me and my wife with Professor Alex Filipenko from UC Berkeley. Dr. Alex Filipenko has a 96 lecture course on astronomy available at the website below. This series took me six months to complete at a few evenings a week and can be purchased for around $200. I think it was a great investment. Looks like, DVD box looks like this. Very cool. Purchasing a telescope. My only advice for purchasing a telescope is to go with the scope that will give you the least amount of stress. I started off with a computerized scope, but I had many stressful nights due to alignment issues. Now that I've switched to a Dobsonian like this one, I just point at the stars and I'm good to go. Refracting telescopes like this one behind me can also be stressful. They're often smaller and come with cheap mounts making it harder to stay on target. There are a lot of videos on YouTube on how to purchase your first telescope, and I'd encourage you to check them out. My personal opinion is to get the most aperture for your money. Aperture is the di diameter of the primary mirror. Most of the time, this will be found in a Dobsonian type telescope. Many large Dobsonians like this one can be found at telescopes.com for under $500. Tips and tricks. If you're going to declare yourself an amateur astronomer, you need to be able to show off your new skills. I'm no astrophotographer, but check out these shots I took earlier this year using only my iPhone. If you're using a Dobsonian telescope like this one, you'll probably want to invest in a Telrad. The Telrad forms a holographic projection on the sky, like this. You then line up the scope with a Telrad map. This map can be found at the link below. And for me, I printed out the maps and made a binder like this. Okay, so now what? When you feel you have a good grasp on amateur astronomy, I feel it's important to encourage you to give back to your community by joining the local astronomy club as well as their outreach program. Here in California, we're often short on people who can bring their telescopes to the local schools and other outreach programs. Almost a thousand people have looked into the night sky for the first time through my telescope. Just think of how many people we could reach if every viewer of this video could do the same. For the club nearest you, again, check out NASA's Night Sky Network website at the link below. And in the words of famous astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson, keep looking up.